Insight for Living Special Needs Ministry has an incredible surprise for you this month as we air our July interview. For any of you who may be suffering or challenged with something you did not expect, the person to hear from is Johnny Erickson Tata. Stonebriar Community Church was very excited to have Johnny Erickson Tata as our speaker for a women's retreat, and then she stayed to do an interview with my dad Sunday morning. This month, we chose to air that interview because it is incredibly encouraging to all of you, whether you are suffering, on the end of suffering, disabled or abled, whatever it is, God has a plan to use you, and this interview will be an encouragement to you. Welcome, and I can't think of any place that I would rather be than, oh my goodness, you guys sing such great hymns. I love it. They're all my favorites this morning. They're in the book. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Johnny, you've been with our ladies for hours, and now you're here. It was a great time, and over at Fort Worth, yeah. oh my goodness, hands down, slam dunk, off the charts, over the top, fun. We had such fun. And the girls at the women's retreat treated me so royally, me and all my girlfriends who were with mm. me. It was great. Isn't that great? Love you it. know, you have no idea what admiration all of us feel for you and have for you and have had for years. But we also know, being realists, that all of this beauty out of brokenness didn't happen in a few days or a few years. Help us, without all the details, help us see the picture of how you moved from the brokenness and the confusion and had to be the anger and the despair to who we see today. How did you get here? Oh, well, there are... There were many change points along the way, but I'm thinking this morning of one particular incident which occurred when I was in the hospital. Doctors had just told me I would never use my hands or walk, comb my hair, brush my teeth, uh, pour a glass of orange juice. I was devastated. You were 17. And I, at night, would wrench my head back and forth on the pillow hoping to break it up at some higher level and so to end my misery that way. Hmm. I knew all the Bible verses. You know, James chapter 1, welcome this trial as a friend. Hmm. Um, Romans chapter 5, rejoice in suffering. And oh. Philippians chapter 1, it's been given to you to not only believe in Jesus, but to suffer for his sake. All of that... All of that worked well when I didn't have a date on Friday night or I had to sweat out 25 laps on a hockey field. But this was different. Yeah. And one night, I was so despairing. I was in a five-bed ward, my, or six-bed six wards. My five roommates were asleep. Nurses were on break. It was late at night. It was dark. And I turn my head on the pillow, and I see in the door frame this figure. It scared me. I, I almost screamed out for the nurse. And then this figure, silhouetted, gets down on its hands and knees and starts quietly crawling into the ward and start, started coming over toward my corner of the room, toward my bed. I nearly panicked. But when this person got right eye level with me, peering at me between the guardrail of my hospital bed, I saw that it was my high school girlfriend, Jackie. I mean, this was the girlfriend with whom I shared milkshakes, boyfriends, hockey sticks. And I said, Jackie, if they catch you here, they're going to kick you out of here. And she went, shh. And she very quietly, with a clunk clunk, lowered the guardrail to my hospital bed. And 
And back then, as high school girls will do in pajama sleepovers, she snuggled into that hospital bed, got right up against me, put her head close to mine on the pillow, mm. and she began singing softly into my ear so as to not awake my roommates. Man of sorrows, what a name for the son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a savior. And, and I wish to this day I could describe what happened. But something changed. She made Jesus so real. Mm. And, and, and maybe there were others who tried to give me biblical truth by, oh, I don't know, as it were, slapping a pint of blood on a counter and saying, here, try this, ingest this, swallow this, memorize this Bible verse, come to this Bible study, you'll feel better. But I don't think when people are hurting, that's what God calls other Christians to do. He, he calls them to show the kind of compassion that Jackie did. You, you know what the word compassion means. You're the pastor. Come with past, passion suffering, right? Do I got it? Absolutely. With suffering. And Jackie... You think I'm going to correct Johnny, Eric, and Tata? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and Jackie was with me in my suffering. Huh. She didn't give me a lot of words. She just great? gave me the word, yep. Jesus. And that, that was a real change point in my life. Mm. There were many, but that was truly memorable. As you began to go through this, realizing I'm going to be here. I'm not getting up. And the realization of all of that, what was it that broke, broke you free from uh, Bitterness. I'm going to say the word bitterness. You sometimes see cynicism and bitterness. And, and when you see the movies about those who are disabled, and, and you often see that mainly as the theme. But you, you had to have moments with that. But that seems to have faded away. How did it fade? Well, when I was in high school and on my feet, I had come to Christ through Young Life. Yes. And that's when they gave you those old J.B. Phillips translations of the Bible. Yes. And one of the things that I had memorized in Campaigner's Club was from Romans chapter, or excuse me, Hebrews chapter 12, where it speaks of bitterness as a poisonous root. Yeah. I hated that word. And when I was in the hospital, that word would often ring in my ear. Wow. And I, I, I just didn't want a root that was poisonous gripping my heart and mm. poisoning the lives of everybody else around wow. me. Wow. And it was that recognition that God's word is true. Mm. Oh my goodness, Johnny, believe it, step into it. Push aside the Kleenex and grit your teeth and take a step of faith and embrace what mm. God has for you. Mm. you. You really had some rooted uh, events in your life prior to the dive into the, into the bay. Oh, I did. And, and many of those events were centered around singing hymns. And I'm not kidding. We sung all my favorites this morning. Really? Um, oh, yes. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me on the living bread. When my weary steps may falter and my soul of thirst may be gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. <laughs> I used to sing those songs with my high school uh, friends, my buddies from high school choir. I was still going through depression. I was out of the hospital. But still, many of my friends were getting married. Some were going off to college. I felt my life was stuck. Well, a few of those friends, Jackie, one of them, came over the house one Friday night, late at night, and they threw me into the front seat of their Camaro. And this was in the days before seat belts and shoulder harnesses. Oh, my goodness. Hello. My parents really took a risk letting me go out with them. 
but we zoomed down I State, Interstate 70 to downtown Baltimore to the old Pennsylvania Railway Station on North Avenue. Wow. Beautiful big building with high marble vaulted ceilings and huge marble columns. At 11 o'clock at night, it was the perfect place to sing. And there was nobody around but maybe a few sailors waiting for a train and a janitor pushing a mop. And, 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 and we kind of clustered together and we started singing, yeah. Man of Sorrows, what a name. And I chipped in with harmony and we had some altos and some tenors and all of a sudden, this officious looking guy comes up to us and says, you kids, get out of here, it's too late at night. See that sign, it says no loitering. And then he looked at me in my wheelchair and said, and you honey, you put that wheelchair back where you found it right now. <laughs> I said, sir, I can't, it's mine. Don't you give me any lip, you put that thing right back where you found it right now and get out of here. But sir, it's my wheelchair. Well, by that time, he recognized that it was indeed my wheelchair. He was so embarrassed. But my friends thought this was so hilarious. <laughs> All the way back home, they, we laughed and giggled. And that night, as two of my friends, Jackie, one of them, was putting me into bed, uh, they both stood over me, one holding my hand, and said, Johnny, I just want you to know how proud we were of you tonight. That was the first time... I ever heard you call it my wheelchair. Thank you for owning your weakness. Thank you for owning it. That speaks volumes to me. Yeah. And wow, I from then on out realized that my weakness was not something to mitigate or sweep under the carpet or hide from others or be embarrassed about or fail to admit. My weakness was something to own. And indeed, the Bible says to boast in, because when we are weak, then he is strong. Right. And that's been the theme of my life mm -hmm. since. Speaking of wheelchairs, your ministry, Johnny and friends, has a marvelous ministry that some may not know about related to your chair and others' chair. That's right. Johnny and friends, um, oh my goodness, we deliver wheelchairs all around the world. Uh, we've just delivered over 100,000, and we hope to deliver another 100,000 by the year 2020. I'll never forget delivering wheelchairs once in Africa with our Wheels for the World team, uh, run by Johnny and Friends. And there was this paralyzed man who came crawling into the wheelchair distribution. He was wearing his flip-flops on his hands, and he was kind of like dragging his body behind him. His legs were dangling. They were paralyzed. And when he saw me... He recognized me and leaned back on his haunches and spread his arms wide and said, Oh, Johnny, welcome to our country where God is so much bigger. And he's bigger because we need him more. Wow. And that's what Johnny and Friends is all about. Um, it's helping special needs families recognize how big God is and not to be ashamed of their weaknesses, hmm. but to delight in them. And so... With the support of Stonebriar Community Church, we run one of the best family retreats out at Camp Allen every summer. In fact, I want to thank Megan Wall, who does yes. a remarkable job, as well as our area director for Johnny and Friends, Eric Jones. Are you guys here? Megan and Eric, Megan, stand up. Eric. Stand up, Eric. There you are. Over Where there. are you? And Megan. There, Megan? Yeah. And if any of our friends here this morning want to come and serve as what we call short-term missionaries, volunteering, pushing the wheelchair, wiping the drool, um, playing activities, getting into a swimming pool mm. with a kid with cerebral palsy, this is the place for you this summer at our family retreat. It'll be great fun. Mm. You go all over, you travel, you fly, you drive, you're involved in so many lives and yet you're in this chair. You get tired. Mm. And when you do, what do you do? I get tired all the time. Mm. There's not a morning wake up, Christian honor. In fact, my girlfriends who got me up here this morning, where are you girls? Right there. 
They will attest to it. We had to pray over me this morning, didn't we? Uh, they, we, they, we look did. tired. they look tired right now, do you notice that? <laughs> they put on good lipstick, they though. They do. Although my husband does not. Oh, it's so funny when he puts on my lipstick. He extends his arm like that with the tube of lipstick, and then I have to come up to the tube of lipstick like I'm American Flight 479 coming into DSW. <laughs> like, then I kind of lock with the gate and go, mm, 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 mm. That's good. Why did I tell that story? I don't know. Because oh. you're half crazy right, just right, like right. I am, you know. But yes, I get weary, and I tell you what helps, a sense of humor. Oh, don't ever lose that. Absolutely. And also singing hymns. Yeah, see there? They would. The reason is, Johnny, obviously, the reason is we don't expect people in a wheelchair to sing or to have a great sense of humor or to have that focus so fixed. Hmm. Hmm. And that's you. Thank you. That's why we love you so. Hmm. And you've become for us a, an, an incredible model, not of perfection, you won't let us think that, hmm. but of authenticity. That is one of your major gifts, stay authentic. Mm. You know, and you, you pick that up somehow. Well, it happens every moment, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, just this morning when we were singing, tears welled in my eyes as I was sitting over there singing that wonderful line. When my spirit clothed immortal wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. And that line right there, when my spirit clothed the mortal, oh my goodness, that's going to happen. I mean, it really is going to happen right around the corner, just over the horizon, not but a few years from now. I don't want to waste my suffering. Mm. Uh, yes, I get tired. Indeed, I get bored, I get very weary, and chronic pain makes quadriplegia look like a cinch. Dealing with chronic pain every day is so difficult. Yeah. But I don't want to smear the good name of my God with a complaining spirit. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 says, do everything without grumbling. I mean, isn't that amazing? <laughs> My teenagers cut that out of my Bible. They, <laughs> they didn't want anybody to see that bird. You know? Well, I have to think about it every day. Do of course. Everything. You know the great word in that song? Jesus led me all the way. Yeah, all of it, all of it. And the whole package. Exactly. And I don't want to waste my sufferings. I, I, I want to do the kinds of things down here on earth and live in the kind of way mm -hmm. that expands my yeah. eternal estate, not diminishes it or shrinks it right. or shrivels it because of a complaining spirit. No, when I enter heaven, when I pole vault over the pearly gates, I want to have such a huge capacity for joy and service and worship in heaven. Yeah. And, and my sufferings are accruing that for me. Isn't that awesome? I mean, you know Fabulous. more about that. You know more about that than I do. You're the pastor. No, no, I don't know more about that <laughs> than you do. No. Now, you've gotten married without even talking to a Cynthia and me about it. You just, <laughs> you just jumped right out there and got married. Oh, absolutely. Now, there's got to be a story in that. Oh, yes. Which interests everybody here. We all love a romantic story. I only have eyes for you, dear. I know a lot of other songs beside hymns. <laughs> Ken, stand up. Here's the man married to Johnny. There he is. My husband's such a wonderful guy. Is that a halo I see over his head? Close. Close. 33 years we've been married. You're familiar with that head. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you why I'm familiar with it. The way I met Ken was really rather strange. Some of you perhaps know this story, but 
It was a long time ago. I was in my early 30s. Ken was in his late 30s. I was sitting in church, a big church like this, one Sunday morning. Our pastor was away, and so we had a guest speaker. The sermon was boring. And so I'm sitting there. <laughs> they're, they're familiar with that. I, I don't. <laughs> they, they, they okay. Just go right on with the story. <laughs> and it was the Lord's Day. It was Sunday. I did not want to sit there and dream about what I was going to have for lunch or think about the work on my desk for Monday morning. Oh, it yeah. was the Sabbath. And so I felt led to pray for the back of this man's head who was sitting maybe four or five pews in front of me. Now, I didn't see his face, couldn't tell if he was handsome, didn't see a wedding ring. But I started praying for him. Oh, my goodness. For the balance of that sermon, I prayed all kinds of things for this guy. And at the benediction, I almost wheeled up to him to kind of, you know, guess what I did for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that would look very pushy. And so I let it drop. It was one of those secret closet things between me and God. But then we were introduced through mutual friends about a month or, late, month or so later. And the first thing I said to this man, Ken Tata, was I met him. When I met him was, turn around and let me see the back of your head. <laughs> and it was him. I couldn't believe it. I said, I know you. I prayed for you. And that sparked a great conversation. Um, I fell in love with the way he could easily deal with my disability. Oh, yeah. And I love the fact that he loved Jesus. Oh, my goodness. My husband, he is the scripture memorizer. Oh. Wow. The whole Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Mm. He keeps challenging me to, to join him and to... Um, Oh, God, can I tell you a funny story? Lighten up on her, Ken. She's got a lot on her mind. So. Okay, so every time we're in the van, right, Ken's got to memorize his verses, and so he's always reciting them. Oh, I love that. I know. So we get into the van no matter where we're going, and we're going down the freeway, and he'll start off saying, and when he was up on the mountainside, the crowns came to him, and he sat down, and his disciples came to him, and he began teaching them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, blah, blah, blah. I almost know the whole chapter because I've listened to him so much. You're referring to Jesus' words as blah, 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 right? <laughs> you can do that. Oh, I don't get away with that, but you can do it. Yikes. <laughs> so one day I was in the living room with Ken. There was a knock at the door. It was some Jehovah's Witnesses. And I kind of pulled back my wheelchair. I'm thinking, oh, Ken, don't get talking to him. But he gets engaged in conversation oh, yeah. with them. And so they're debating back and forth. Finally, they give him a question that really stumps him. And I see him out there, and he says, well, uh, you may think that way, but did you know that when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and he sat down and the disciples came to him and began teaching them blessing, blessing, for his grip, and there's a kid about the thing. A jet blast of scripture pushed these guys down our sidewalk and down the street, never to be seen anymore. There you go. There's Ken. <laughs> it's true, huh? Now, That's you guys true. must have had some fun moments. I know all life hasn't been that serious because I know you that well. You must have had some great time. Uh -oh. oh, you threw your arm back. You're getting oh. ready to get with it here. Well, it, when I think of a particularly fun moment, it was when we were visiting my mother down in Ocean City, Maryland, at her condominium. Yep. We were walking the boardwalk one evening, and there are little hotels along the boardwalk, and there was one hotel, and we could hear piano music, beautiful piano music, coming out of the lobby, and oh my goodness, uh, we went in to listen, and there were couples, many couples, dancing on this little wooden dance floor, and they were playing our favorite song. Are the stars out tonight? I don't know if it's cloudy or bright, but I only have eyes for you, dear. And I said, Ken, let's dance. And so we got out on the, on the dance floor, and we are wheeling this way and that, and I am going back and forth. We scared, we scared everybody off the dance floor. I think they were afraid their toes might get run over. But what was so cute is that we kept dancing. I don't know how Ken kept up with me. We kept dancing, and as we danced, we're the only ones on the dance floor, 
And all the other couples are lining the floor with their arms folded, tissues out, crying their eyes out. They, oh, think, really? they think this is such a sweet scene, but we're having such fun. And great? I did not roll over his toes. You have managed to walk this journey 47 years. Am I right, my math? You have shared the story. You have lived the life. And yet Christianity, in fact, Jesus himself, is so real. Mm -hmm. And he's not gotten to be a cliche. Mm -hmm. I've not heard one cliche ever from you. You're, you're not cynical, but as a professional, and I mean that in the right sense, you present Christ in the most winsome way. How do you keep from it turning you, uh, especially with so many around you preaching that you ought to be healed and if you really walk with God, you'd be up on your feet. And I'm sure you hear that. I've read your books. I know what people say to you. How do you guard against becoming a Christian professional who spouts out words without really meaning them? Oh, my goodness. I think that's why God has given me such a severe disability. It is a blessing, but it's a bruising of a blessing. Mm. It's a friend, but it's such a dark, strange friend. Mm. And when others are doing your toileting routines and you have to instruct new women every other month on how to come into your bedroom and give you a bed bath and put up your support hose and strap on your corset and slip on your slacks and put you in a wheelchair and irrigate your catheter and clean up your backside and all these things are so humiliating. But often out of humiliation comes humility if you allow humiliation to do its work. Humiliation usually happens when some idol in our lives gets knocked off its shelf and shatters to the floor. Yeah. And in my case, it probably is pride. Every time I might feel a little prideful or I start running mental movies of my successes, God, with a flick of the finger, casts off the idol, crashes to the floor, and I have an accident in my pants. And wow. it's humiliating. But I know almost with a with a wry smile, I know what God is doing. Jesus, you are so incredibly wise. Thank you. Thank you for the humiliation because I want to be humble before you and make the most of the moment, not for my glory, but for yours. It's just another reason why we all can boast in our affliction because our weaknesses humiliate us at times. We end up looking foolish, but then 1 Corinthians chapter 1 tells us that it is the foolish things of this world that God has chosen to shame the wise. Yeah. And so make the best of it yeah. and boast in the Lord in it. And that humiliation will keep you pretty humble. How's that for an answer, huh? It's just magnificent. I got many others, but I'm going to stop at this one. Um, we have folks sitting among us who don't have the joy you have, and they long to have it. They've not broken through that membrane of cynicism confusion. And there are some who minister to those who are disabled that are running out of want to. That makes sense, doesn't it? Talk to them. 
if I could, I wish it were just you and I in the room, mm. and I would sidle my wheelchair up real close to you and lock my brakes and lean over against your shoulder, and I would whisper in your ear, Man of Sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came for you, mm. for me, and for you. We all suffer in this world. It is a broken, diseased, and damaged world. Yeah. And we are all broken and diseased and damaged. But why wallow in regrets? Why wallow in self-pity? Why sit in the corner and feel sorry for yourself? Or why ask God with a clenched fist? Why not start asking him why with a searching heart? And let him speak to your heart. This man of God, this son of God, this Jesus who understands suffering. He wrote the book on it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, when they hang you on a cross like meat on a hook, you, you, you understand suffering. You get it. You resonate with it. You know all about it. And you know best how to heal it and move the soul beyond the bitterness to joy. God shares his joy on his terms. And I don't know why, but for some reason, those terms call for us to in some measure suffer, as his own son suffered when he walked here on earth. But when you grab hold of Jesus and embrace him and lay all your weakness and pride and sin at the foot of the cross, oh my, he gives you joy that is so profound, so deep, so rock solid. He gives you peace that is unshakable. He gives you effervescent delight that floods the walls of heaven comes rushing into your heart and streaming out to others and rivers of encouragement and then rising back up to God in ecstatic fountains of praise. That's the way to live. But you can only live that way when you walk through the suffering and embrace Jesus who knows all about it. And I can't wait for that day, Chuck. Oh I'm my sure. goodness. I'm sure. I can't wait for that day when he's going to lift the curtain on suffering and sin and Satan and he is going to give us brand new glorified bodies. And as C.S. Lewis says, at first we shall burn with the brilliant newness of being glorified. <laughs> but all oh, that in the next moment, all the pains of earth will feel like a half forgotten dream. And I do hope that I can take my wheelchair to heaven with me. I know that's not theologically correct. But if I could, I would put it right there. And I'd be standing in my new glorified body right here, and I'd be holding the hand of Jesus, mm. and I would feel those nail prints in his palm, and I will say, thank you. And I know, he'll know I mean it, because he will have recognized me as the woman who came to him every single morning hemorrhaging human strength. I need you, Jesus, desperately. Mm. And I will say to him, Jesus... You were so right when you said that in this world we would have trouble. That thing was a lot of trouble. But the weaker I was in that thing, the harder I leaned on you. And, and the harder I leaned on you, the stronger I discovered you to be. And I'm just so grateful that you gave me the privilege of knowing you as not only my man of sorrows, but the Lord of joy. Rock of Gibraltar, real joy. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And now if you want, you can send that thing to hell. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> mm. Get it out of here. No more night, no more pain, no more tears. Oh, boy. I'm no David Phelps, but don't you love that song? <laughs> Never crying again. It's beautiful. I'd rather hear you sing it than oh, David no, Phelps. No, no. Well, I know a song we could sing. Remember the, tell the story. Oh, we were at NRB and, and Johnny was there sitting at the end of the platform table and I was there and of all things, they'd asked me to speak and they had Johnny there and the light turned down to her and they were greeting her and 
Instead of saying much, she just chose to sing. One of my favorite moments, I've told Cynthia about it many times. And she broke into, well, when peace like a river attended my way, join us. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say. Men, let's hear you sing. It is well, ladies, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. You always minister to others today we want to minister to you we've brought our best voices to do that and they're going to sing to you if you can keep from dancing <laughs> we'd like you to listen to this wonderful message we'll put the words on the screen so you won't miss them and we mean these with our whole heart we love you, John. Thank you.
I'm sorry, but you're going to have to wipe my nose. It's another one of those humiliation moments. Nothing worse than getting snot all over your husband's fingers. That's a great closing line for us today, <laughs> Johnny. Oh, my goodness. Chuck, I cannot begin to thank you for everything, just your faithfulness in preaching the gospel, oh. gift ministry here at Stonebriar, the support this church shows Johnny and friends, our partnership in the gospel together. Mm. This, is, this is greatness. Absolutely. That's greatness Absolutely. right out there. And, and thank you for all you mean to millions and millions of people since we're all disabled. Yes, we are. God bless you, friends, and thank you for welcoming us so warmly. I'll see you tonight. And now to him who is able to guard us from stumbling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power this day and forevermore, and evermore, and evermore, and evermore. And all of his people said, Amen. Amen.